what was this when it began? When did you start making this and why? Um, well, my relationship with Mr. Rogers uh, goes back to when I was one. And I loved the show. I was born in 1967. So I was like a first generation Mr. Rogers fanatic. And um, like most people, I didn't then think about him for decades of my life. And he started coming back into my life over the last, you know, five to 10 years um, in strange ways. Um, probably the, the first one that really got me thinking differently was when I was making a film with Yo-Yo Ma and Yo-Yo was very good friends with Fred, uh, which I didn't know. So right when I was getting to know Yo-Yo, um, one of the first days I shot with him, we had lunch together. And during lunch, I happened to say, so how did you figure out how to be famous? And he said, oh, Mr. Rogers taught me. <laughs> and I, I kind of chuckled. That's a self-help yes. book we need. <laughs> and I, I chuckled, and he's like, I'm not... I'm not kidding. You know, I went on a show several times, but I went on as a young man and he saw I was struggling with being famous. And so he really tutored me over years to show me how I could use fame as a positive force and a force for social change and a force that would be something to elevate me and not weigh me down. And that kind of blew my mind. Um, and that was really, and I actually put a little clip of Yo-Yo and on Mr. Rogers neighborhood in that film and every time it came up in a screening, like, I just felt good. You know, there was something about it. But I wasn't thinking I'm going to make a Mr. Rogers film. Um, and then really, after a whole bunch of other things, uh, I think it was in late 2015, um, somehow, you know, somebody had sent me a viral video of Fred Rogers, and it sent me off on this YouTube deep dive into Mr. Rogers commencement addresses. Um <laughs> And I stayed up really late watching them. And it just hit me in this profound, moving way that like this, this is a voice I don't hear today. You know, that this is not a film about nostalgia and it's not a film about going back. It's a film about going forward. You know, how do we get that voice into today? 100%. Um, so I woke up um, the next morning and I asked my wife, um, do you think it's a good idea to make a film about Mr. Rogers? And in full disclosure, she's a children's librarian. Um, so she thought it was a great idea. <laughs> so, uh, and from there, you know, I had this kind of hesitation because in many ways, Mr. Rogers is the quintessential cardboard character in our culture. I mean, he's been kind of a punchline for so long. And can you make a serious film out of somebody who people don't take seriously. I mean, that was my own kind of baggage about it. Um, but step by step, I realized that, in fact, it was the most profound story I could tell. And it was a story I needed to tell for me. You know, I felt like this film was my form of dealing with the culture and dealing with therapy. And I've made a lot of films dealing with same, similar issues. I made a film called Best of Enemies about these debates between Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley, which in a way is like a weird, dark cousin film to this film, because it's also the same time period, and it's about television and the power of it, and that's kind of a cautionary tale, and this is a hopeful tale, but it's also a question of how do we come together to have discourse? You know, how do we advocate for civility? How You know, these kinds of questions, which are ones that I keep coming back to, uh, and I realize that Fred Rogers was the perfect character to explore those.